Could you tell us about your encounter with Masakatsu Takagi? Yeah. And uh, could you tell us about his appeal and like what kind of things left an impression on you? Yeah. Um, I first encountered Masa Masakatsu Takagi's work when I was um, at a pretty low point in my life. Like, I was really struggling with almost everything. I was really struggling to make music, struggling to leave the house, to have any real sense of meaning or purpose. And, and I encountered his music while watching the anime called Wolf Children, which he did the soundtrack for, the Okami Kodomo. And um, it just, it hit me so hard. Like the combination of the visuals of that movie, which are very, very intimate and cozy and sweet and depict reality in a very rosy, beautiful way, which is how it is. And his soundtrack, which is comforting and peaceful, but also melancholic. Um, it just, that soundtrack makes me cry every time. And it's connected with me like no other movie soundtrack ever has. And then I dove into his discography and his, his album Kagayaki, it, like in that album, like he's sampling the voices of much older people who sound like they're in their like 90s and the voices of children playing piano. And it's like this thing that depicts the beauty of living in this little snapshot. Um, it's something that's just so beautiful. And so I mentioned that I heard his music in a kind of low point in my life when I was really struggling to make music. and. One of the remedies for me there, one of the things that helped me get out of that period of being stuck was, well, like I had basically hold myself up in my room trying to get music done. And the more I hold myself up, the worse my music got. Because I wasn't letting myself like watch movies or listen to albums or make new friends or see new things. I was just like working, 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 right? And the problem with that is that artists aren't these people that just have ideas flowing out of them. It's all output from the world that, that gets channeled through you. It's like trying, it's like a car that has no gas in it and you're like repeatedly pressing the gas pedal, like, oh, if I press it like a few more times, it's definitely gonna go. Like, I needed to go to the gas station and refill my car and the way of doing that is to like live life and have things to talk about and have new experiences and have new input. So in 2016 or 2017, uh, I actually flew here and I had a little studio set up in Ebisu and me and my fiance just like, I had the studio available, but it was like a no pressure thing. Like I'll go in on days that I want to, but mostly I'm just gonna enjoy myself. I ended up spending so much time in the studio because I got so inspired and I worked on, I wrote Look at the Sky while I was here, um, which was kind of like the lead single of the last record. But one of the things that I got to do while I was here was the whole time, like every week I was emailing Masakatsu Takagi and I was like, can I, can you come to Tokyo or can I come to your studio? Like, can we work? And eventually he got a response. He's like, sure, like you can come through. And he's like, we'll, we'll make it work. So we got on the Shinkansen to Kyoto and then we took a few more trains to Hyogo, which is where he lives. And it was like the ultimate like hospitality. Like I felt really bad because he was like, okay, here, like here's your here's your, your bed. Here's where you and Nika, my fiance, will sleep. And like we come to find out like that that's that his bed. Like, <laughs> you know, and they were like cooking. It was like my first time having the like shioyaki samo and uh, I was like for breakfast and I was like this is the like I just feel amazing every day and he kind of like watched me play piano and he gave me advice and he he made some recommendations about like try playing in this key and he taught me some harmonies and stuff like that and you know I came there expecting to collaborate with him but the energy was more like I was asking him questions and he was like, yeah, he, he talked a lot about his own conversations that he'd had with Ryuchi Sakamoto and um, he like repeated things that were said 
to him by Ryuchi to me and told me that he was doing that. And he also showed me a lot of like Japanese IDM from like the like J ambient music from the late 90s and early 2000s, including a lot of his own recordings. Um, because Takagi's earliest musical works are like he was doing video art. He was making like video art using his like Mac products, I guess, and making the soundtracks for them. But of course, he was godlike at making the soundtracks. And so it's a lot of like really cool granular stuff. It sounds like people who are familiar with Nurture, if they listen to Takagi's early works, they'll feel so much influence there. Um, so we worked a little bit, but. We just made a bunch of recordings, and I took them home, and that turned into a song called "Wind Tempos" off the Nurture album. Um, but yeah, he's a uh, he treated me and my fiance with the highest, highest level of hospitality and kindness, and like gave me a gentle push in the right direction in places that I needed to be pushed, and like gave me feedback on my music, and. Um, he was like really clear about which songs he liked and which ones he didn't, and it was all needed. Like, it was enormously, enormously. Like, it just helped me grow a lot. I'm extremely, extremely grateful to him and um, and to his wife. Um, and now they have a kid. Uh, yeah, it was very touching. I asked him if he would perform for the second edition of Secret Sky and the performance that Takagi did for the second Secret Sky was he he played kind of his biggest hit song, which is a song called Girls, but he had his child sitting on his lap, like kind of pressing keys randomly and he was harmonizing with that. Not randomly, because everyone has a musical intuition. Um, but he was like singing and harmonizing and playing with his child. It was like the most moving thing. Like, yeah. Um, such an inspiring artist. And also, one of the first things that me and my fiance bonded over was Takagi's music. I, I, we were just talking about music and I mentioned him and she, we were on FaceTime and she was like, she was like, look at this. And she went over to her piano and she had his sheet music like right there. And so for us to get to stay at his place and um, yeah, I just learned so much. Uh, really hope I can like do that for somebody else too. You know what I mean? Um, like if I'm, when I'm Takagi's age, if there's like some kid that's like making music that sounds nothing like what I'm known for, but he's like, yo, you're the goat. I gotta be like, let me try to impart some of what I know. <laughs> um, cause that's what was done for me and it helped me a ton, um, and really changed my life for sure. So, yeah. It's crazy how like connected, uh, he, he was to your life in general and like, I mean, saying that that's something that you bonded over with your fiance and then you get to go hang out with them <laughs> get like mentored and given secrets and it, it, it was just for a couple days so i don't want to like overstate being like oh he taught me everything I oh sorry like he i don't want to overstate but like that time was so invaluable um yeah just like precious precious memories um just to get to meet him after the role like i just there would be no nurture album without Takagi Masakatsu. So, like, yeah, even getting to meet him, like, they were just really meaningful. 